Hello there everybody, Brandon here coming to you in my gallery and studio today and with the colder weather outside I was inspired to get into another fall autumn type scene here so we're going to have a paint along with me on a small canvas. If you want to get started on this one, this is just a simple little fall autumn scene with a barn in there, a few pumpkins in the front, a lot of orange and reds in this. Let's get to it. I've got a six by eight gallery wrapped canvas here that I'm going to be doing this project on. I'm going to be doing it here in portrait mode. You could certainly do it in landscape uh, if you want, but I'm going to be putting in a fall autumn scene here with a lot of orange in it and a little bit of reds here and there too, but I'm going to have some trees out here. I'm going to stick a little barn there in the background and a couple of pumpkins here in the foreground. And I'm going to do this kind of a throwback Bob Ross kind of style, except I'm going to be doing this in acrylic paints. Um, and I'm going to start with a, I'm going to start with a wash brush, a one inch wash brush here and drop in just a tiny little bit of a sky with a hint of phthalo blue mixed in with mostly titanium white. So I'm just going to drop in this color in a few places of where maybe the sky will be showing through the tree leaves that I don't completely cover up. But for the most part, this is all going to be covered up, so I'm not going to be too worried about it. And now to really make Bob proud, I'm going to get a big old two inch brush out here. And of course you could do this with something smaller if you want, but I'm going to go into just a little bit of yellow ochre and maybe some medium yellow, a touch of red here and there, trying to create a background color here for my trees. And we're just gonna glob all that in there. Like I said, throwback Bob Ross style, I wasn't kidding. I did not completely mix that paint on the brush. I just kind of globbed in a couple of different colors on it so you can see that there is a lot of yellow ochre in there, some red showing through here and there. Maybe even some medium yellow value here. Somewhere in this vicinity in the middle is where I'm going to be sticking a barn, so I'm not too concerned about covering that entire area up. And for my ground, for the most part, I'm going to come in with those same colors because we're going to have leaves and everything down here as well. I'm going to put in a touch of raw umber here with this as it comes here to the foreground to darken things up a little bit as it's getting closer here to the front of the canvas. And I'm gonna do the opposite and add a little bit of medium yellow value, maybe a tiny bit of titanium white in that mix as well for this area that's a little further away. And then just kind of bring those colors together. Now I need to finish blocking in my background here. Alright, I'll give that a minute or two to dry and then we will drop in our barn, I think. Alright, I'm going to use a palette knife here to get my barn in place and I'm going to start with uh, a roof line that is mostly just going to be kind of a gray looking tin kind of roof so I'm going to go into a fair amount of 
titanium white with a touch of black in there to gray things out. And then I'm going to come in here and, and just figure out where I want to put this thing. Something about like that maybe. And it doesn't have to be exact at this point because we can come in here with some leaves on some of these trees and cover some of this up if we get something that we don't like the looks of that is And then my barn itself, I'm going to go into that same mix, but add raw umber into that. And I'm not going to mix it all up uniformly. I'm very purposefully leaving it kind of unmixed and streaked. So I can come in here and drag that color down to give us some kind of wood look back there. And I am just looking for a basic shape here because I am going to come back in with a, a brush and fine tune this. So I'm not overly concerned about everything lining up just perfect. All right, that gives me my basic shape, and so now I can come back here with a brush and clean this up a little bit. I can fine tune my edges, cover up this little area here where I got a little extra white stuck on the canvas, so I'm gonna just take care of that real quick. And I'm just basically gonna glob a little bit of color over this to cover that back up, and I'll end up putting a tree or something in front of this anyway, so again, I'm not really worried about what's going on with this. Now I'm just going to touch up some of the edges of this barn here, put in a little raw umber here along the base, give me a little shadowed area along the edges that when I come back in and clean up the ground I'll be able to work with that as being the edges of the barn itself. Drop in a little bit of a straighter line of it over here. And really now all I'm going to do is try to fine tune this barn a little bit here with this brush. I'm going to straighten up some of my roof line here and of course I want that to be a little bit shaded um, here underneath where that roof is extending so having a little darker color on here is what I'm going for. Also along 
this edge here it's going to be a little shaded underneath there where I bring that roof line down as well and I want to finish my roof off here I'm just going to bring in this gray and cover it all the way across and it's okay if you leave this a little bit streaky looking because I mean who knows what this roof is. I mean this roof could be could be wood obviously it could be a piece of um, aluminum or who knows what's up there but it's all right if we have a streaked looking effect here on our grays as well on the roof Now I'm just defining out my shaded areas a little bit better and kind of blending those down. And you can work this barn um, however you want. I mean, you could make a red one instead of this gray that I've got going on if you want. Um, if you don't want that kind of streaked looking, you know, old wood effect, you can come in here with a more monotone color, obviously. I'm going to ultimately come back in, I think, with a liner brush and create a little bit of separation between some boards on this thing. But for right now, I'm just trying to get the look that I want of an old weathered barn wood looking thing. So again, I'm very purposely not mixing my paint here. I'm working with mostly with black and titanium white and a touch of raw umber here and there just to create this streaked look. All right, now that I've got my basic barn shape there put in place, I'm going to drop in some tree trunks and some tree limbs out in here and then come back over that and finish detailing out the limb texture. So to do these tree trunks, make a couple of large ones with the same wash brush I've been using and I'm just gonna lay down a base color of a mixture of black and raw umber. maybe a hint of yellow ochre in it as well just to keep it being from, from being quite so dark and I think we'll put one in maybe right in front of the barn there maybe another one that's off this back corner over here Now I'm going to switch to a little quarter inch angle brush to lay in some smaller ones out there. And ultimately I want a pretty full looking amount of tree limbs going on back here which um, will cover some of this up with more leaf texture but I'm just going to randomly drop in a few base limbs here with this little angle brush and then I will finish things off with a liner brush where I can get smaller tapers going. And now I'm going to move to a liner brush to basically finish out putting all those in there. And 
And again, I'm just gonna randomly squiggle in a bunch of little limbs and things going on back here in this background just because whatever doesn't get covered up with leaves I want to show through there being a lot of things going on up here in this canopy but you can put in as few or as many as you want I guess I want it to be a pretty good mix back here myself I am going to take my saturation down and my limb color here a little bit to put in some that look like they're a little further away. So I'm going to knock that down a little bit with some raw umber, maybe a tiny bit of titanium white in it as well. Put in a few what look like more distant trees and limbs back in there as well. Now I'm going to come back in with my wash brush here and add some more leaf texture. And I'm basically going to go back into a lot of yellow ochre, a touch of red, maybe a little bit of medium yellow here and there, and just put in some different values of those colors here on top of these limbs to create more leaf texture. And I'm just kind of tapping this leaf texture in with mostly just the corners of the brush here. And I'm just going to bring in a variety of just some yellows and oranges in here, maybe a little bit of reds, just to cover up some of this uh, limb and tree trunk that I've got going on in here and to give me a little bit more variety of uh, leaf highlights here, some stuff that's maybe a little closer to us. Now I'm going to move to this um, half inch rake brush type thing I've, uh, you've seen me use before probably on the channel uh, just to add in the last bit of highlighted details of leaf texture on here with my brightest colors of these yellows and oranges and reds that I'm going to put in.
And I'm basically doing the same thing with this brush, just kind of tapping in the color. But with these, um, the way this brush is shaped, I can get smaller little uh, individual leaf detail in there, I guess. So I'm just going to keep working with my yellows here and reds to create a variety of different colors going on and just tap this in in a bunch of random places until I get the coverage that I'm looking for. And again, this is another point in the process where you can do as little of this or as much of this as you want. You can, you know, vary these colors up a little bit more. Um, I'm just going for a really, basically an orange and yellow and red looking fall scene here. So that's, that's all I'm working with in terms of my colors. Then I'm going to bring a few here that's maybe falling down in front of this barn itself. And I'm also just going to create a few random places here, mostly in front of this barn where it looks like leaves are in the middle of falling down to the ground here. So I'm just going to drop in a few random little orange blobs here couple of different leaf shapes just to make it look like some of these leaves are indeed falling as we're looking at this image. We'll start adding a little bit of leaf texture along the ground here. Basically I'm going to start out with just a mixture of raw umber and yellow ochre to create some shadowed areas. Clean up the base of those trees a little bit. And then as I come into the foreground here, I'm going to bring a little more red into my mix, create bigger shapes, and also larger shadow areas with more raw umber. When I want my shapes to be larger in the foreground and I want my darks to be darker and my highlights to be a little brighter.
I added just a hint of titanium white here to knock my saturation down a little bit for this ground area I'm just going to scrub in that's a little bit further away than the foreground. I want to take that saturation down a little bit just to help with my illusion of depth here. And I'm just going to go ahead and use this brush here to kind of finish off the bottom of these trees here. Add a little bit of dark color here with what would be the, the roots, I guess, coming along the ground just to make the bottom of these trees look a little cleaner. And I'm just going to throw in a few more browns and dark orange and some stuff here along the ground. Just some little tapping in a few more leaf textures that's on the ground. And it's again another spot that you can put in as little as you want or as much as you want. I think that's about all I'm going to do. Now I'm going to move over to my liner brush again here and add in a little bit of what would be maybe a door on this barn here. Put in a little bit of a dark line to give an indication that maybe there's a, a door here that's shut. And then I'm also going to put in a few random lines here along the sides that maybe give me some separation of what would be some boards here along the side of this thing. And then define out this front corner a little bit where this the face of this turns. And then a few random lines here along the front. And then I think I will be done with the barn itself. Now I think I'll drop a few foreground pumpkins down in this area. And that'll be about all I'm going to do on this one. To get these pumpkins in, I'm going to start with just a dark shape that's going to be mostly yellow ochre and a tiny little bit of red and a little bit of raw umber. Create this kind of a dark brownish orange color. And again, I'm just looking for a couple of basic shapes to start out with. We'll put one over here. Put another big one maybe right here in the center. Maybe one more little one back there. And we'll give ourselves a little bit of a shadow, add a little extra raw umber to that. Kind of at the base.
Now we just need to shape these things out by putting our highlights in the proper places. So I'm going to create a little bit of a brighter orange value here. Some medium yellow, some red, a little bit of titanium white. And see if we can't start to shape these guys out a little bit. Just get a basic idea of what it's going to look like. Put our little different ridges in here. Start to define our pumpkin a little better. I think maybe this one will have him laying on his side. I'm going to move to a little small 5 aught spotter brush that I've got here now to kind of finish these pumpkins out. First thing I'm going to do is add some kind of stem in here so we know what we're working with. I'm going to just basically go into a little raw umber, touch a black with it, and define out where our stem is going to be. Now I'm going to continue to highlight out my ridges in here, working with, again, some brighter values of orange and some darker values to just define out the shape. And all I'm really doing here is putting in a little bit brighter highlights in the areas that maybe are catching the most light and reflection that we can see. And then down in these crevices, leaving those areas dark just to create that look and illusion that there's a pumpkin here. So it's just all about suggestion at this point and creating that look.
and then saving my brightest highlights with the most yellow in it for just some of these edges that I want to give the idea that they're catching the most light and then I think I will be done So there is a quick and simple fall little barn scene. Not worried about a lot of detail in it, but just enough to communicate what we want. A little fall colors and some pumpkins in the front. Hope you guys enjoyed painting along with that one. Until next time, happy painting everybody.